العام 2006 سمعت من أصدقائك عن موقع يدعى فيسبوك فتحمست للفكرة أردت أن تتواصل مع أصدقاء طفولتك جلست سجلت وأدخلت بياناتك الأساسية نقرت موافقا على المربع الصغير في نهاية صفحة السياسات مدعيا أنك قرأتها وسعدت بانضمامك لمجتمع ضخم من الأصدقاء عالم لا متناه من الأخبار الترفيه والصور الاجتماعية المنمقة أربعة عشرة عاما مرت على تلك اللحظة هل تسألت يوما عما كتب فيها؟ لعلك لم تنتبه لجملة تقول لنتمكن من توفير فيسبوك علينا أن نجمع بعض البيانات عنك هذه البيانات قد تنطوي على معلومات حول وقت ومكان دخولك إلى الموقع المحتوى الذي تضيفه أو تشاركه رسائلك إلى الأصدقاء الصور والفيديوهات وكذلك الكاميرا Basically, it's, a, it's tapping onto a need that we didn't know we have. It's kind of an, an emotional decision for an individual to be a part of that community. Uh, but once you're part of that community, what you start doing is you're giving out your data. And you're giving out your data for free. Um, and then they play with our mental state in a, in a meaningful or unmeaningful way in order to achieve their own uh, specific goals. Those goals can be positive and negative sometimes. It depends how you look at them. الجميع إذا يلاحق بياناتك لكن حقا كيف سيستفيد فيسبوك أو غيره من هذه البيانات الشخصية البحتة؟ صورتك وأنت صغير ترتدي ملابسا لا تعجبك أساسا أو رسالة صوتية أرسلتها لابن عمك متهربا من رحلة العائلة في الجمعة القادمة So each platform has their own KPI These KPIs sometimes are commercial sometimes are um... have a different goal and basically when the when a company on, on its own is trying to um, improve their KPIs the way they work is they they try and grab grab your attention for example for YouTube one of the main KPIs is watch time so how much how long are you staying on their platform uh, and then you see Facebook launching something like Facebook live right So then uh, they're trying to get into that space so they can, um, you know, collect your watch time again. So the time is the optimal currency and everyone's fighting for your time, right? They have a lot of data. We've given out a, a ton of data to, to, to these companies throughout the years. They say that an average person on Google has over six gigabytes of data on, on, on each individual. So... And then, you know, the danger is, is who are they sharing this data with? So if you are Facebook, for example, and you have Netflix on the side, um, you, you obviously you wouldn't want to share your data with, with, with Netflix because you're completely two different companies. But, but for example, uh, Facebook acquired Instagram and Facebook acquired WhatsApp, right? So is the sharing of data between Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram possible? And they, do they do it? Um, any intelligent company would do it. So they will always, all of them will try and collect as much as data as they can. Again, if you understand the AI and if you understand the machine learning algorithm, you'd make millions of dollars. All of us would. But so you cannot, like, you can just presume what the algorithm is doing. So... <clears throat> Basically, what the algorithm would do is collect a ton of data from multiple uh, points of, um, say, your behavior. And then what it would do, it would think, it would classify you as a specific persona, right? It will say, this is a person that wants this type of content, that type of, has this type of interest, uh, looks at this show, da 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 And then based on that, it will serve the, it will push the content towards the, this specific persona. Until <laughs> لا يبدو الأمر خطيراً كلما عرفت عنك هذه المنصات أكثر كلما استطاعت أن تقدم لك محتوى يليق باهتمامك صحيح؟ لماذا هذا الهوس إذن بالخصوصية؟ If you've uh, listened to Mark Zuckerberg's testimony at Senate uh, there was one senator, I can't remember his name that asked him a very good question uh, which was, where are you staying? Which hotel are you staying in? Mr. Zuckerberg Would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Um, 
Uh, no. Well, he's sitting in front of uh, Senate and saying, uh, well, I'm not comfortable giving out that information, right? Um, so th th the reply is, well, uh, this is what it's all about, right? Um, we accept the terms and conditions and agree to them very easily because uh, nobody's going to read 52 pages of terms and conditions. But in those terms and conditions, we accept a lot of things that are potentially not comfortable for us. التكنولوجيا التي نصنعها تصنعنا هي أيضا بدورها أنت ترى العالم بعين ما يظهره لك حسابك على السوشيال ميديا لكن هل فكرت يوما إذا كان هذا العالم الذي تراه من شاشة هاتفك يشبه الحقيقة؟ AI serving you with information that it already knows that you're interested in is this a realistic world? Is it uh, morally uh, is, uh, permissible? Is it uh, something that, you know, it, it's ethically um, correct? It, it's a difficult question to answer. Say, I would go even one step further, and uh, I would say AI is now getting to a point where it can predict uh, your behavior, right? Before it couldn't do that. Uh, AI before it could predict your rational behavior, right? It can predict where you're at or what you're doing, but it couldn't predict what you like or what your interests are. So, so, so we're going to get to a stage, uh, I think, and this is very, you know, science fiction, but we're going to get to a stage where AI, AI can predict what your emotions are. So how do you feel? And then it's going to serve you content based on your emotions. So that's a very scary thing to, to say or to think of. And maybe that's the next evolution of humanity, when you actually, actually understand that emotions are predictable, right? And you think you have an ego and you're an individual today, maybe in 50 years you'll understand you're an algorithm.